All right, so we're doing part B now of the problem 315. It's same thing, right? Evaluate the global XY stiffness matrix. They give us EA over L. We just gotta kind of use that huge matrix to, to get the answer. But let's go ahead and get started. All right, so again, the goal for these problems, right, is finding the, the global XY stiffness matrix, obviously, but this is the formula, so there's a lot of theory behind it, right? They use transformation matrices, they transpose them, all this good stuff. It's kind of crazy what uh, they do to get this formula, but the point is, this is all you'll need for the exam, so unless you're really interested, you might want to go ahead and take a look at the theory behind it, but this is the goal, finding, well, they give us EA over L, so it's, it's easy. And then this is cosine and sine values of the angle and um this is what i like to do if you saw the other video and even during my exams i remember so i like to make a little sh little chart i don't know what you call this right a little table um they do get more complicated in this case we just have one beam right so it's just one element but sometimes you'll have up to two three or four or whatever depending on your um problem obviously right uh so element one right then we're gonna do the angle of it uh, then we're gonna do the the cosine of that angle. Then we're gonna do the sine of that angle. Then we're gonna do cosine squared. Then sine squared, and then finally cosine times sine. And in this case, right, we just have a 90 degree angle, so our angle is 90 degrees. Cosine of this 90, that is zero. Sine of 90, that is one. Cosine squared, that is zero. And sine squared, that is one. Cosine times sine, that is zero. So these are the main three columns you need to fill this matrix out. After this, we don't use any of these numbers anymore. This is just to, to not get confused when you're doing these. Because again, sometimes you have tons of beams and you're just, it's real easy to get confused. But make a table like this. If Assuming you had more elements, you'll do element two now. The angle, cosine, all that good stuff, right? Um, so, and then EAL, last thing before we get to the answer of this problem. These problems aren't that long, but that is just 15 times 10 to the 6, right? E times A, which is just 15 times 10 to the 6 divided by 15. That is just 10 to the 6 uh, pound per inch. That's the unit right there. Um, yeah, that means we could go ahead and solve it. It's not a long video. Um, we're gonna have K is equal to EA over L, 10 to the six. That's gonna be, it's a U1, V1, U2, this looks like a U, there you go, and V2. Um, we're gonna have cosine squared, which is zero. Then we're gonna have CS, which is zero. Then we're gonna have negative c squared, which is zero. Then negative cs, which is zero. Um, v1, that is starts right here, s squared, it's symmetrical. So that means uh, cs will go here, negative cs will be at this one, it's kind of just diagonally, right? Um, where were we? Right here. So s squared, that will be one. Negative cs is zero, negative s squared is negative one again don't get confused because this doesn't mean you square uh s okay it's kind of confusing but at the end of the day you'll need these numbers and if there's a negative here that's gonna counteract whatever sign is here sometimes you'll have a negative but just fyi next one is c squared and cs zero and zero and then finally s squared which is one and this is the answer uh Again, the nodes are now U1, V1, which is the X and Y component of node one, and then U2, V2. And yeah, you just, it's symmetrical, right? So you put bring this zero here, this zero over here, this zero over here, this zero over here, then this negative one over here, and then this zero over here. And that's pretty much the answer. I'm nothing crazy, but these problems do get crazier, but I guess just for now, it's pretty straightforward. 